ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, we're back. Week eight or something of the comeback. Um, last week we talked a little programming. The week before that we talked nutrition. Go check that out today. I'm gonna talk about some habits, some things that I've done my entire life um, to help build success, I guess. Uh, whatever you can consider successful at. To me, I guess success would be setting a goal and reaching it. Multiple goals, being able to reach those and have a pattern um, of repeatability. So before we dive in, be sure to give this thing a thumbs up. Subscribe, new videos every Monday. We might be dropping new vlogs coming. Comment below if you wanna see some vlogs. Uh, something we used to do back in the day. A little bit of day in the life, a little bit of business, a little bit of lifting. Um, and be sure to check out Twitch. We're live every Monday through Thursday, hanging out all day. Awesome community, having a lot of fun. Twitch.tv slash Silent Mike. Link in the bio or just search Silent Mike on Twitch. So you often hear when people are talking about injuries or life or business, you hear all these gurus talking. And I bash a lot of gurus, but some things they have right. Uh, start to try to focus on the things we can control and ignore a little bit if we can or push aside the things we can't control. It's time to roll with the punches. Um, me personally, this is something I, I struggle with uh, mostly out of the gym. In the gym, I can deal with it, you know, whether it be injuries or being banged up or not having the squat rack that I want or the barbell I want. Um, all that I can handle. The life stuff, the business stuff does get frustrating because when I set these goals, I don't like it when something else is stopping me from pushing forward. Um, and basically what I'm getting at is I had some really good mentors growing up. Obviously, my mother and father, number one, um, my strength and conditioning coach, Dean Durham, shout out to Dean, uh, and my high school basketball coach, Dean Stark. Um, and all of them really talked about preparation. Preparation, some type of process, some type of people in sports maybe call it like a, a superstition or, or a tradition. Um, you know, you see different players do different things at the free throw line in a basketball game. Maybe different players are, are doing a dance or, or tying their shoe a certain way before a, a, a football game or before they play or, or a track runner doing, you know, whether they're saying a prayer or, or some kind of signal before their big race. Um, I think having a little bit of processes, whether they're big, small, more um, applicable or more like meat and potatoes or even some that are a little fluffy can help a lot in our progress so when powerlifting, you know to me the bigger ones or the meat and potatoes would be like what you eat before a squat day when you eat when you go to bed what types of foods you like to eat i used to be really eating burritos before a big session like three hours before the time you eat when you go to bed some of these things become processes programs schedules if you will all the way down to the little things, like how do you tie your shoes? I used to have an exact routine for every single basketball game I ever played on. When I put my shorts on, I would always go to shoot around and I had my shoes untied. People ask me now still why my shoes are untied. One, I'm lazy. <clears throat> Two, uh, it's tradition when I'm squatting and stuff, I don't really lace up until I'm competing or I'm going for like a PR or something crazy. Um, just because of basketball, I used to go to shoot around with my shoes untied. Then I would tie them up when it's time to actually warm up, warm up when you're doing layup drills, etc. Um, just an example of something all the way down to actual technique stuff so which foot you put first when you do the, a deadlift and you set up um, what's your routine with breathing and grabbing the barbell which hand goes first uh, bench when you breathe when you tighten your back where you put your feet how you put your feet and all these things similar to a basketball free throw similar to a golf swing how you set up will not only uh, allow you to have more success and control those variables within that one movement and training session, but when repeated over time, over time, uh, days, weeks, months, years, will allow you to kind of forget about all the small steps and allow you to really focus on the big things. And similar things happens with business, similar things happen with diet, when you're prepared, whether you do food prep, whether you order food from the same place, um, whether you have the same snacks in your house, whatever, it'll allow you to not um, have the small things kind of give you hiccups along the way or speed bumps. Having this foundation, and the decisions are almost made for you. So my deadlift, I've been deadlifting for 10 years, my setup's always the same, so I don't have to think about which hand, where my feet go, what I should do with my hips. All I think about is getting as tight as I can and pulling on that bar as hard as I can. Now in training, there will be small cues I'm trying to tell myself that I want to improve on, but overall, after you build these habits, it'll be easy. And again, nutrition, lifting, all the same. Big picture, small picture. Business, life, same thing. Sometimes you file an email off to Joey and finance and you can't get that back. But if you handle your work, your process, all right, every time I have to write a proposal for this job or for me, like a sponsorship or a partner or whatever, I do this process, I get it done within this amount of time. So then when it is out of my hands, um, you can just fully let it off your shoulders. Because again, stress, anxiety, all these things can really add up um, as we don't build these processes. So just to insight how I kind of work as an athlete, um, 
Um, I'm starting to build these processes up again. My routine is probably not the exact same with my squat bench deadlift because I took so much time off, but it's going to be very similar uh, how I set up my foods a little bit, whatever, as we talked about in the food uh, nutrition vlog. Basically, just because of my life stress, I just my schedule is too packed right now for me to really be on my nutrition, but I'm doing my best. Um, but as many as I can control without overloading myself is what I'm going to do. So the basics are the form and technique, the bigger picture, you know, when you eat, how you eat, when you sleep, bigger, bigger picture, when you work, when you train, how many days a week you train, uh, and then same processes hopefully carry over and even your personal life, you know, and it sounds kind of lame that I have to like schedule in time with my mom, but I'm busy. And so I'm trying to make a point that every Friday, Saturday, I'm going to go hang out with my mom, see my dogs, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and it is a way of being organized. Some people might be like, Mike, you just blabbed five minutes and all you said is be organized. But um, I think it's very scalable. It's very easy just to put appointments in your phone and go to that. And if you work a nine to five, your life's kind of broke up Monday through Friday, nine to five. Um, but when you work for yourself, it's a little bit more difficult. And when you train, and it's your goals outside of your work, you're basically working for yourself. No one else cares about your deadlift PR. No one cares about your program, your bench progress. Sadly, I'm telling you, no one cares but you. Um, maybe your coach cares a little bit. Maybe they're a little invested into you and your team or something. But point being is those are the things you have to start to build processes for when you start to take that responsibility. And a lot of people do work normal jobs and you have some responsibility, but not all of it's on you, right? Because you work for a company, an organization, you have a manager, you have teammates or whatever. Um, but when you start to build those goals, whether it be business, lifting, nutrition, no one cares and no one's going to fix it but you. So control as many variables as you can. Um, I got to head home. We're going to deadlift tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to hit some Twitch right now. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully you take something from that and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Ladies and gentlemen, just to touch on the video, uh, some questions about RPE I've been dealing with in Twitch chat if you want to come hang out or my DMs. Um, basically, someone was asking, obviously, like when and how to use RPE because they say they're bad at judging their own lifts. Um, and it is a skill. Rate of perceived exertion, it basically just means a way for you to rate how well a load or lift moved in the gym. And so, one, um, Having consistent training partners can help you. Two, just looking internally and kind of writing it down. Three, potentially videotaping yourself. Scales of right uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten out of ten being you couldn't do any more weight, you couldn't do any more reps. Nine being you could maybe do one more rep, maybe uh, you know two and a half, five percent more weight, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Percentage, percentage-based trainings based on how strong you are off a one rep max, and that's difficult. Um, the pros and cons, right? The pros of an RPE is that we're not the exact same strength every single day. If you're going by your one rep max at a meet, uh, you obviously peaked for it, hopefully prime conditions, and you were physically and mentally revved up for that lift. So what you did at a meet, say you squatted 500, you probably can't squat 500 every single day, yet. RPE takes that into account. It's how you feel, how you're moving that day. Not necessarily how you feel, but how you're moving that day. And so that's how you can adjust load. The conversation we're having is how do you linearly progress in programming while using RPE? Now linear progressions are different than like typical linear periodization. A typical linear periodization means basically you're adding load every week. Linear progressing can mean you're adding load, but it doesn't mean that you're at maximal load. If I did a five by five at RPE 10 and I've been training for a good while, I probably can't add load to that and do another five by five the next week. RPE takes into account how you feel that day so that you may not need to add load and linearly progress every week, but you may add volume or it allows for the days that you do feel good to push it a little bit. Um, say an RPE nine typically, you know, is around a 500 pound squat for you for a single. On a good day, maybe you can hit 505 or 510. And on a day where life, stress, sleep, food, everything's not perfect, maybe you hit 490, 495. Again, referring to the conversation we had earlier in this video, in the video last week, it doesn't matter so much that you're adding five pounds every single week. Once you've trained for about a year, it's going to be nearly impossible. What matters is that we're handling, you know, some kind of strength training, uh, you know, in the, in the single to triple reps, 90% ish, when we're going in a strength cycle. We're getting some kind of hypertrophy or volume work to continue to learn the skill and build different muscle fibers, right? In the three, two, three, all the way up to eight rep range. That we're staying healthy and that we're progressing somehow physically and mentally. Hopefully that makes some sense. I do appreciate you guys. All the support, all the comments mean a lot. Again, comment below if you want the vlogs to come back. Some training vlogs maybe coming a little bit more raw style. We'll see. We got some projects in the work. Solid Mike, appreciate you. I'm out.
Bye.